Breaking news, any minute now, we should hear about a ceasefire uh, between Israel and Hamas. Um, details are still to be determined, but uh, it seems like, um, like there is uh, there's some information that we can, we can discuss. Um, it, 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 the Israeli cabinet is meeting maybe now, maybe in an hour or so, uh, probably to finalize this and to approve the deal. The deal, it appears, again, this is all just appearances, this is just all rumors at this point, but according to um, sources deep inside whatever, uh, it is a two-phased deal. Phase one uh, includes uh, the release of 50 Israeli women and children held in Gaza, and Israel is expected to release about 150 Palestinian pris prisoners, mostly women and minors, uh, and uh, I guess the emphasis on the first 50 hostages released by Hamas is going to be on dual citizens, uh, citizens of uh, other countries. You know, they have a bunch of their ties, and I think for the Philippines, and uh, of course, Americans and others. Uh, they will, as part of this, there will be a four day ceasefire. So Israel will cease attacking Hamas, and supposedly Hamas will cease launching rockets and attacking Israeli soldiers on the ground. Um, it, it, you know, uh, uh, none of the prisoners that Israel will release, supposedly, have been convicted of killing Israelis. Uh, and uh, the names are going to be made public so that uh, Israeli citizens can appeal to the court against their release uh, if there's any particular name there that is, that is particularly offensive. So... Um, the, the, the names will be released in advance. As part of this deal also, Israel will allow around 300 aid trucks per day to enter the Gaza from Egypt, and uh, they will allow fuel uh, to also be brought in, um, to be brought in uh, during the ceasefire. In the second phase, Hamas will release dozens more women, children, and elderly people in return for Israel extending the ceasefire by several more days. Um, you know, the Israelis are arguing that Hamas can probably get 70 to 80 more hostages released, even though Hamas doesn't necessarily know where all the hostages are. Some of the hostages are held by Islamic Jihad. Um, you know, uh, so uh, anyway, that that is... Uh, that is the deal. Um, uh, as part of this agreement, Israel will prevent the return of Palestinians to the southern Gaza, Gaza to the northern part of the enclave during the pause. And um, it, the IDF will resume military operations once the pause is over. Uh, anyway, this is, this is where we are. Uh, I think uh, everybody seems pretty happy about this. Although I'm sure some of the uh, right wing and some of the opposition parties in Israel are against this. Uh, Hamas leader Ismail Hanania, who is in, uh, uh, of course, in Qatar, who is rumored to be a billionaire. It's because of all the startups he has, he has you know, built and created. A billionaire. Only way he could be a billionaire is by siphoning off some of that money that the Americans give the Palestinians every year. Uh, and have been for, 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 for decades now, uh, and all the money Qatar gives them and all the money Saudi Arabia gives them and all the money everybody else gives them, and he's siphoning quite a big percentage for him to be a billionaire while people are starving in Gaza. Uh, he said the truce is, is very close. Um, I mean, this is a moral abomination. You cannot have a truce with evil. You cannot negotiate with Hamas. Basically, Israel is sanctioning their existence as a legitimate political entity with which we now have a truth. Hania should be dead. He shouldn't be negotiating. He should be dead. When the Mossad chief went to Qatar to negotiate, he should have left a bomb. I mean, I'm being ridiculous, but he should be dead long time ago, decades ago, but certainly now. All this is an example of Israel's weakness. All this is a consequence of America's weakness. 
All this is a consequence of Israel's fear that the West will stab it in the back, which it's going to anyway. As soon as the ceasefire is over and Israel resumes military operations, the world is going to go apoplectic anti-Israel. They're going to nonstop accuse Israel of war crimes, of killing civilians. And October 7th will be forgotten. Netanyahu, in his famous book on terrorism, states that you cannot negotiate with terrorists. This is an abomination. It is a disgrace. I mean, I'm sorry. I really am sorry for the, for the I, I know the families of the hostages, are, you know, and I'm glad for them. I'm happy for them. I'm happy that uh, people get, get uh, uh, you know, get the people, get their family members back, um, it, you know, uh, and um, I, I'm happy for, for, for the families and for their friends and for everybody and for the hostages themselves to, to be freed and, and to be able to come back. I'm happy about all of that. And yet I said on October 7th, uh, 8th, when, when it was clear they were hostages, I said, you've got to act as if they're dead. Rescue them if you can. But there cannot be negotiations with Hamas. Hamas is not a legitimate negotiating partner. It, it is a genocidal, homicidal, barbaric regime that needs to be eliminated. Everybody eliminated, including those who you negotiate with, sitting in Qatar, eating, you know, magnificent dinners and negotiating with Israel as if they are human. They are monsters. So, I, you know, I, I get it. I get it. Netanyahu's under pressure from the families. Uh, he's under pressure from Biden. He's under pressure from the Europeans. Uh, I'm sure uh, some people in the military are probably saying, yeah, a few days of rest are going to be good. But what people don't understand is to regain the momentum and to regain the world's attention to the evil of Hamas and the need to destroy it, that is gone. And it, it's, it's bad enough that Israel wasted two weeks after October 7th not doing anything. It's bad enough that instead of flattening vast parts of Gaza, they have sent in ground troops It's bad enough that they constantly compromise in their own self-defense. And now a truce might last four days here and then a few more days later and, you know, over a week. And then go, go do what's necessary after that. It's just, it's just maddening. And, of course, continues to madden me is, is the fact that uh, on social media and everywhere, the, the, the anti-Israeli propaganda, and often in the name of objectivity, is just, just horrific. Maybe one of the worst, uh, you know, let me see if I can find this guy. Uh, one of the, yeah, one of the worst of these people is Mario Nafal. Mario Nafal. Um, and Mario Nafal is, uh, what has he got, a million followers? He's got like a 1.1 million followers. He, uh, you know, is is a is a real big shot, real big shot, when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to. How am I live on X right now? It says I'm live on X that I am hosting. Is that right? is that real? I'm just on X and I see this this show. Oh, I guess I guess my my feed. Counts as live on X. Huh, interesting. Interesting. All right. Anyway, Mario Nafal, who, who, who is a Elon Musk darling, is a, is a Twitter darling, is a Twitter favorite. He is the guy who supposedly, um, it, you know, is, um, um, is 
you know, he, he runs some of the, the biggest, uh, what, what do you call it, events on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, he is, uh, he, is unf he's, he calls himself in his title, unfiltered, unbiased, verified 24-7 breaking news. No bias, no echo chambers. God, is he biased. He is so anti-Israel. Every time Israel publishes something, well, I don't know if we can believe this. Do you really believe this? Is this really evidence? Does it? And then every time the uh, Hamas publishes something, see, maybe, maybe Israel's not right. Maybe, maybe, maybe there aren't tunnels under the, the hospital. Maybe, maybe this isn't right. Maybe that isn't right. It's so biased. It's so disgustingly biased. I mean, he should be sued for, I don't know, for fraud, for putting in his description, no bias, no echo chamber, when clearly he is biased. And look, to be biased, you can be biased by being balanced. The world is not balanced. There is right and wrong. And unbiased means to seek out truth. Unbiased means to seek out right. Right. Anyway, I'm looking at my show. So yeah, we've got three, 13 viewers live right now on uh, Twitter. So you can watch this show live on Twitter. You, can, you don't have a chat on Twitter, but you can, you can make comments, I guess, on Twitter. Um, I'm not sure how, uh, you know, how exactly this works, but this is being broadcast live on Twitter. It's also being broadcast on Facebook Live. I stream this on four different places, two two different uh, places on Facebook, one Twitter and one on uh, YouTube. So no excuse not to watch uh, the Iran Brook show. All right, let's see. Um, uh, so yeah, so I, I, you get my sense of, uh, of the ceasefire. In the meantime, Israel's making progress both in the north and, and starting to prep the ground uh, for ground troops to enter the south. Um, one of the things that will happen if the ceasefire uh, happens is that it will give uh, Hamas the time uh, to uh, coalesce its forces in the south to figure out where Israel is going to enter into the south and to prepare ambushes, booby traps, and uh, uh, to kill as many Israelis as possible. So that's what a ceasefire will indeed achieve. Nothing good. I mean, not nothing good. The release of the hostages is good. Uh, but nothing uh, good in terms of its long-term consequences uh, for, for, for this war. I just don't see how Israel can win the war as long as it's willing to engage in, uh, in ceasefires when every single um, element within the Israeli military and intelligence agencies should be focused right now on one thing and one thing only, not negotiating but is killing the Hamas leadership as quickly, as effectively as possible. 